So I honestly don't know what I like more. A pile of arrowheads and artifacts, or a pile of candy. Good morning or good afternoon everybody. Welcome to the channel if you are new to it. My name is Paulie. Today is gonna to be a different kind of video because for one, I'm practicing this social distancing thing, and two, I'm, I'm just really bored. So I thought, why not just bring you guys to my place and show you guys around, show you what I have and see where it goes. I'm walking in a field not too far from my place. This actually looks like not a bad area to metal detect. That little hill right here is a bike ramp. I know that because I suffered my first concussion right there. <laughs> Our first relic of the day, a scooter in the bush. So we're at the house now. I thought I'd just start off by showing you guys some of the equipment that I use out in the field. So the first machine I got is the Fisher Goldbug 2. Now I found a lot of gold with this machine. This is actually my second one that I've had because my first one got stolen. Our second machine is the Garrett AT Max. Now I just received this machine and I'm not really sure how to use it, but apparently these work really well for looking for treasures, coins, and even gold, but I have yet to really use it. And this was given to me by Von Garrett himself. So thank you again, Von, and I look forward to using this machine. Our third machine is the MindLab SDC 2300. Now this is a pulse induction metal detector, which means it just goes a lot deeper than the VLF machines. This was given to me by a really good friend of mine who I believe wants to remain anonymous right now, but that's okay. I have yet to find gold with this yet, but soon, hopefully nuggets. Our fourth detector isn't really a detector, but it's a pinpointer. Again, this was given to me by Von Garrett, a really, really nice guy. So other than these metal detectors, I really don't have a lot here. I mean, I have a handful of classifiers, handful of pans, but I do have this old rocker box that I've never actually used. <coughs> Maybe one day. Other than crevice tools and whatnot, I have my mask and snorkel, boots, socks, gloves, knee pads, and one, two, three, four, five wetsuits. And this is the blue room. This is the room where I end most of my videos in. And this room is literally just my bedroom. Here we have the bed. At the other end of the bed, we have the computer. This is where I spend days and days and days editing our videos. And then we have the corner. But we don't talk about the corner. The computer is my favorite part of my room because this is where all the magic happens. And I have everything I could possibly need, including this microphone, to make videos. And then when I get bored, I push that thing away and then roll back and I can go to bed. And I can sleep and think about candy, a gum, hand sanitizer. <laughs> a lot of you have been asking me how much gold I have or how much gold I've found. And that's difficult for me to answer because I've, I've given a lot of gold away. And most of my gold is actually practicing social distancing in the bank right now. But I will show you how much gold I have here right now. So our first vial of gold was from Chris from Vogus Prospecting. This is the first gold I ever found in Australia and I believe this was somewhere in New South Wales. So that's little jar number one. Number two is from Sean from Busted Knuckles. This was, I forget exactly where we were, but this was somewhere in Wagga Wagga, Australia. So more Australian gold to add to the collection. Number three. This gold is from Andrew from Adventure Gold, again from Australia. That red piece in there is, I believe, Zircon, but I could be wrong. So we have three little jars of Australian gold. I'm supposed to be in Australia right now in Pilbara, but uh, yeah, that's not happening anytime soon. And jar number four is some of my fine gold. I believe there's 20 grams or so in here, and I'm getting prepared to melt this. I thought about it for a long time and I didn't want to melt anything, but I kind of want a gold bar. But I still might change my mind last second. I have no idea. And of course, some gold nuggets. So this is my very first gold nugget that I have ever found. I found it with my Fisher Goldbug 2 metal detector. It weighs one and a half grams. And I, I don't think <laughs> the lighting in this room or on this camera is really gonna justify the actual lovely colors that gold has to offer. But you get the idea. This was my very first nugget I found underwater. 
And let me tell you, when you find a piece of gold for your first time underwater that weighs a gram or more, you are hooked, my friend. You will go through wetsuits, boots, gloves, hand sanitizer. Yep, first piece of sniped gold. This is the flattest piece of gold I think I ever found uh, sniping underwater, detecting, or anything. Just the flattest piece of gold I have ever found. And this was found in my last video, and if you haven't already seen it, please go check that out. I said that this looked like Africa, and some people corrected me and said it looked like Tasmania. So let me know what you think. These are the three biggest pieces that I have so far. <laughs> This one, I believe, is just over five grams, and this was found sniping. I found this along with, I think it was 10 other grams in the single crevice. It's one of my most popular sniping videos I have today, and it's where I was screaming underwater a bunch. This is what I call the foot nugget. It weighs 5.8 grams. And this was found crevicing just above a pool where I like to scuba dive. And of course, last but not least, the 7.5 quarter ounce piece. It's not very big, but uh, it's fat. And I like fat gold. So other than that, this is really all I have left that's here at my place. Got a whole bunch of nuggets in here. I got some, this is a nice little one. That was one of the nuggets I was included in that 13 gram day. I have uh, some gold that I found with Jeff Williams up in Arizona, or I should say down in Arizona. And then yeah, just a bunch of heavy, shiny, lovely pieces of candy. So there you go. This is the gold that I have right now that's not in the bank. We'll weigh it all up and see exactly how much this is, so yeah. Starting with our 20 grams-ish. Around 20 grams. It's stuck. Come on. There we go. It's stuck. Uh, 21.26 grams plus. Oh, it's heavy. Kind of missed. Come on, you can do it. I believe in you. We have 70.57 grams, which is a little over two ounces, so not too bad. So other than what I have given away, what's in the bank, what's in the crucible, and those three Australian jars, we have just over two ounces of gold. So your answers have been questioned. I mean, your question have been answered. Now, if you're interested, I have some artifacts to share. So some of you may not know this, but hunting for artifacts is what got me started into treasure hunting in the first place. I was actually looking for airheads when I first started this YouTube channel like 10 years ago. And most of them have been deleted, but if you scroll back far enough, you can actually watch some of those really poor quality videos. So everything you see here, I have found. However, not everything I found is here. Because like the gold, I've given some away, I have some in museums, and I have some in displays elsewhere. But, of course, I couldn't get them because quarantine. This is the first arrowhead I ever found. And you can blame my entire channel off this arrowhead because this is what got me started in the outdoors in the first place. It's made from black basalt and I found it when I was about 10 years old. And I found it on an island, off an island, where I live on. It actually has a unique little scar on it too, which makes it special. So this is my favorite stone piece of candy. So that same day, I ended up finding these two guys right here. This one is just a regular arrowhead. It just has a kind of a unique shape to it. I don't know what the terminology for this shape would be. And then that same day, I found this guy, which at first I thought it was an arrowhead, but then uh, as I got older and the more I studied, I learned that this was a drill used to drill holes in shells and wood and bone. So that's cool. These three pieces are really worn and that's because they were found on the waterfront of a ocean beach. That's why they're so smooth. They're usually a lot sharper than that, but they stand out when you find them. So it was not hard to figure out that they were airheads considering I know the, the area, I've done my research, I know what to look for. But yeah, here you have it, worn, Arrowheads. The more I looked, the better I got. 
and the better I got, well, the, the more I looked. <laughs> this one there has a barnacle on it. I thought that one was really neat. I'm tempted to break it off, but I, I kind of don't want to. I, I kind of like it there. This guy was given to me by Ed Marvin. Flash in your pan. Check him out on YouTube. He does lots of uh, podcasts. And these two guys look pretty close to that last one. But I believe these ones are made from petrified wood. Both from a different location here on the island. I could be wrong. I can't really figure out the material, but dang, look at that one. That's really nice. Super sharp. I thought it was a crab claw at first when I found it, but it's a shame it's broken. One day. I found this beauty while I was skipping rocks. I picked it up. I was going to skip it, but I'm glad I didn't because it's an arrowhead. This is a weird thing I found. Kind of an anomaly. I don't know what you would call it. I don't think it's an arrowhead. I mean, it for sure didn't fly through the air. I believe it's some sort of knife. Maybe a Christmas tree. Something special like that. Now these guys are a bit more special to me. Um, especially this one. I'll leave the link to your top right where you can watch how I found that. Kind of just walk in the beach at a popular area that I like to find arrowheads at. It's an old piece. And all these are slate. The ground slate. Like all this is the bottom of a spear. So you can imagine how long that would have been, that just being the bottom. They're all super thin. Well, this one's exceptionally thin. Made from ground slate. Same thing, you can see the beveled edges on both sides. This one being crazy. You can see that sharp edge. If you kind of look at it at a certain angle, you can see that diamond shape. Again, this is that bottom half or bottom three quarters. These would have made really nice spear points. This is the tip of one. Super sharp, camera not really focusing on that detail. Another tip, another centerpiece. This centerpiece, you can really see the diamond shape in this one. Really nice beveling on all sides. Again, broken, really unfortunate. This is perhaps the fullest one, fullest spear point that I have found. Made from ground slate, very, very sharp. My camera's actually having trouble focusing on it because it's so, so detailed. But I found this in a very shallow creek. I was surprised it wasn't damaged, but maybe it damaged a little bit on the bottom. I can't really tell, but nonetheless, super beautiful, hard to focus piece of candy. These guys are hard stones, celts, adzes. They were used for cutting, cutting tools, you know. I found this one in the mud. Really nice, I think it's nephrite jade. I can't really tell, but you can, you can see the beveling on it. See how sharp that thing is. And I screamed like a little kitten when I found it. This was the first one I ever found. Again, the beveling. I'm gonna talk about beveling a lot because it's such a fun word, but I believe this one used to be way bigger. There used to be a barnacle on that, unless that's bird droppings. This used to be way longer, used to cut up stuff. And this one, I actually almost threw away. Again, super sharp, really polished on that corner, and then flaked on this side, with all the damage around it, all the pecking. This was for sure a cutting tool, and it fits nicely in your hand too. Or projectile to throw at all your stuff. <laughs> this one is actually my favorite one that I have. It's a perfect one. It's absolutely beautiful. It was only meant to be in your hand. You can see a little bevel on the edge there to get the lighting properly. Nice and sharp. Nephrite. Maybe jade. I actually I don't really even know. This is my second favorite one. Also found in the mud. Not too far from that first one I found in the mud. This one has a unique shape to it. I believe this one wasn't handheld. I'm sure it's, it fit nicely in a bone shaft. But a nice piece nonetheless. And out of this box, we have probably the nicest one I've seen come out of the areas where I did my hunting. 
My mother actually found this one. Nephrite Jade, nice and sharp. Made Polly jealous, because I didn't find anything that day. But I'm happy for my mama. Another jealous find of my mum's was this guy. And actually, this is literally called a what's it. Like, what is that? It's literally called a what's it because nobody knows what it is. People say that it's a part of a fishing weight and all that, but just by its shape and its design, it's so hard to find exactly what this is or what it was used for, but nonetheless, it was made by humans a long time ago in an area where I should have found it. So I have a lot of artifacts. Not as much as some of you hunters out there, but I think we're just gonna have to go out and see if we can find more. And I have some pottery in here too. I believe all the stuff was made from clay. That looks like it's probably made from somebody's fingernail. But I could be wrong. This is a bit thicker, thicker clay found on the beach. This, I don't know what it is, it's made from bone. It has the same sort of shape as those slate spears over there, but again, made from bone. Not very strong. I found this guy, made from bone. Another thing that I have no idea what it's for. Okay, camera, you can focus now. Has a little boat, boat beveling on it, as I call it. Made from bone, cool shape. Perhaps a necklace, or perhaps a fish. Now this little arrowhead was given to me by a special friend, Bryson Dick, the art effect on Instagram. And he is the guru I go to when I have any arrowhead artifact related questions. Now I'd share to you where this one was found, but I don't think he would like that. So here it is, a little tiny, sharp little projectile. Now, as for everything else I have, it's really just a pile of pieces. A bunch of flakes, a bunch of things that I got no place to put, and then I have some more slate pieces. I've got so many of these slate pieces, but again, they're not all here. Oh, I almost forgot. I actually made this, and this is a full grooved axe. Obviously not done yet for those of you who know artifacts. I still gotta work on the groove, make it a bit deeper. And I gotta work on the sharp part and then polish it all up and call her a day. Still pretty cool. So I think that is it for this video. Now I know this is kind of a weird, strange video for me to post, but hey, I'm getting bored. I know I need to make more videos and I know you guys deserve to see more. So I thought why not give this an opportunity to show you what I have here. Now I gotta hurry up and put all this junk away. If you enjoyed this video, chances are you're going to enjoy what I've previously posted and was coming up in the future. So please don't hesitate to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And also if you're interested to see behind the scenes stuff like extra footage or anything else, I do have a Facebook and Instagram open for your pleasure. So thank you for watching. Thank you so much for your support. And until the next one, wash your hands, stay safe, and I'll see you later. Hand sanitizer.